Hey everybody, welcome to Adventures with Peps. We are doing something a little bit different today. I've been noticing that my Saturday videos don't do very well and I comprehend why. It's because you got the big companies like Games Workshop doing the special releases. You got those people with the brand new releases that good on them. They're absorbing all the excitement of that day. And I've noticed that my stuff is, anything I post on Saturday takes a few days to build momentum. So I thought I'd mix it up for a little bit, maybe not always post a miniature on that day, because <laughs> I feel, I don't know, it's it's sad when I'm putting some painting guide up that I'm like super excited for, and it's a bit slow to start going. And yeah, anyway. That's a me problem. That's not a you guys problem. It's a me problem. But today, anyway, we are going to go through some back issues of White Dwarf that I have. Now, I don't have many of these. They are very few in my collection. So we've only got a couple of episodes worth. But they are all themed to Judge Dredd, as is very obvious with the cover on this one. So we are looking at White Dwarf, the science fiction and fantasy games magazine issue number 36 and it costs 75p in England, $3 in the US and three fifty dollars in Canada and $4 in Australia. And as you can see, Big Old Dreddy by Boland, the classic artist of that era. It says he's tough but fair. And obviously this was back before, this is probably even before we had a Warhammer or a Warhammer 40k and Games Workshop was more of a Dungeons and Dragons supplier for the UK. And we open up to the first page and it is a beautifully bright colour. Look at that. We have Judge Dredd, the game of crime fighting in Mega City One. Another mega game from Games Workshop, available at mega stores everywhere. 1982. I have that game. I've actually got it twice. Uh, one set's complete, one set is missing the playing pieces, if I remember correctly. So drop me a comment below if you want to see me play this game. I'd be very happy to actually play it with my wife and see if we can record it for everyone to watch and listen to. Then inside this magazine, for December only, Games Workshop London is having a special late night opening. Thursdays until 7.30pm. Bless them. Judge Shred, the game of crime fighting. Can we just look at that price for a minute? £7.50. Amazing. So this is a sell sheet. It talks about RuneQuest, which was another role-playing game they had. Traveller, the classic, that um, still around, still kicking. I'm not sure about RuneQuest. Does somebody know if that's still going? Uh, then, of course, a ton of Dungeons & Dragons. Talks about mailing club and a mail order. So cool. Looking back at like 1982. Then we have a little advert for the city of Sorceress. Dare you tread the streets of the city of Sorceress? Wow. Look at that. A game of skill, low cunning and sorceress combat for two to four players. Easy to play, yet marvellous to behold. Then we have... What we got here? Card Warriors. Standing pads. So this was a company that just made little character cards for you to play your games with. Loads of uh, adverts. Computer gamers. Send now or ring at your games guide. Price list and details for group visiting services. I have no idea what that would have been advertising. Um, then we've got the Game Center. Look at that, amazing. Now, with air-conditioned comfort from the best stocked dungeon in London. The largest selection of games in the world. 22 Oxford Street, London, the basement department, <laughs> and the 52 Western Road, Brighton. Wow. That is... I um, just love looking into the past at things like this. Ice Roll Master Series. So, Ice did games like uh, Lord of the Rings role-play. That was one that I can quite clearly remember. It's obviously an advert for them. 
a British magazine of illustrated humour. Look at this. The monthly cartoon and strip magazine for mature readers. 60 pages based on high quality paper. Sorry, printed on high quality paper. 20 of them in full colour. Each volume contains a free full colour poster and costs only one twenty-five, or $15 for 12. Buy mail. Plus, get an extra book for free. What is this? I don't even know what the name of the magazine is. It doesn't say. It's Mount Pleasant, third floor Pamphlet House, Mount Pleasant, London. And then we get heavily into some Judge Dredd stuff now, finally. It goes through books of the era. Judge Dredd, coloured series. <laughs> Judge Dredd, volume one, to the cursed earth. Click, yeah. Oh, that artwork of the Cleggs. I absolutely adore Cleggs. Then we got the Robo Hunters, and there's some t shirts. You could have a Judge Death candle for five pounds. Eight inch tall. Amazing. Painted in several different colors. A stunning gold plated badge. 35 millimeter high. $2.25. Uh, two and here's some uh, a set of three finely cast 45mm high figures from 2000 AD. Cast in white metal and blacked, they form the first three in a series of highly collectible miniatures. You get Judge Dredd, Judge Death, and Robo Hunter, which was Sam Slade over here. I'm hoping Warlord Games at some point might attempt a Robo Hunter. I think that would be absolutely cool. And here's the price guide. Oh, the comics were so cheap. Obviously not when you compare the prices back then to prices now. And wholesale orders via Titan distributors who still are going, which is quite nice. Then we have a Merry Christmas to all our customers. And there's some price guides again. So what, we're already... We're six pages in roughly and it's been advert, 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 advert. And then we are in December 1982. I've not even been born yet. Uh, I'm about two months away from being born. Ian Livingston is the editor-in-chief. And seasonal greetings from Mega City One. In case anybody hadn't realised, the cover of White Dwarf is graced by Judge Dredd, painted by Brian Bolan. Using comic style art for White Dwarf is a revolutionary step. Although plans are now in operation, it will result in quite a few changes in the magazine's style and content. Having analysed all the recent feedback, it's quite clear that everybody would be quite happy to see a few game related additions in White Dwarf, on the condition that the editorial content did not suffer. Early in the new year, we will be adding. Uh, I've lost where we are. Adding book and film reviews, fiction, a cartoon strip, a board game feature to the New Look magazine. Keep your scanners tuned for details. In the meantime, have a splendid Christmas, Earthlets, Ian Livingston. So on page 12, we're going to have Judge Dredd, the game in the making. An introduction to Traveller, a Druid's Grove. Guide to Dungeon Mastering. Fiend Factory, Letters, Microview, Open Box, Rune Rights, a treasure, treasure Chest, The News, and Small Ads. 32 pages, roughly. And then, I just, look at this beautiful artwork. The AE's Dread is just, mm, yes, I love AE's Dread. So it's talking about, obviously, the new game. Talks about the editor being a fan of Judge Dredd and how the game's going to actually play out. Beautiful game. It's quite nice. A nice two-page spread all about it. Talks about being a Dredd fan myself. The thought crossed my mind that Dredd would make an ideal subject for a game. But how? Should it be a role-playing game or a board game? Both were ideal. But I decided on a board game to be followed next year by the RPG supplement. So it seems like they're talking about this getting released. I thought this was going to be about the RPG, but it's actually about that. And it 
just delves into the mindset and what they were up to. The object of the game obviously talks about the judges roaming the streets fighting crime. Each card has a cool little image. We'll have to show off that game at some point. Then, the Fiend Factory is a regular department featuring Reader's Monsters. Edited by Abby Fjord, this issue, as Asop said, only one, but a lion. What does that mean? The Lokai. Yeah, the Lok... Lokuli? Lokuli? Lokai? One of them. I don't know. Something like that. It looks like it is 100% D&D rules. It's lawful neutral. Seems to be some crazy lizard creature with a sword and a club tail. Very much looks like... Um, what's the monster from Hero Quest? Is it the, the firma? Has a cyclops eye, has this big club tail. I think that's what it is. If you remember what it's called, drop me a comment. Has psychic powers. I wonder if that's like a precursor to it. Then a player's guide and characters. The introduction to Traveller. Traveller is a game in which each player takes the role of a single adventurer in a sci-fi setting. If you've not played Traveller, it's worth having a look at it. It's a very crunchy game, I guess, is how you would describe it. It has loads of rules. You can really get into into the number game with that system. I've played it a few times. It wasn't for me because of all the numbers, but I can see why people enjoy it. Then we have letters from customers. <laughs> Let's read the first one as it's only a little short one. Dear White Dwarf, I feel sure there must be a misprint in Don Turnbull's letter of WD-34. Surely he meant that Ken's St. Andre's sentence should read, Since I am the kind of person who can easily improve someone else's over-complex, unimaginative rules. Jeez. Janet Horton, I wonder if you're still with us and what you're up to now. We also get, what is this, a Microview is a regular department for computer games. Wow. ZX81 programs for Traveller. A little bit made the uh, a pixelated white dwarf as well. That's a nice little touch. We've got weird ass code for the Traveller game. I guess it's so you can play on play on your computer. What a time to be alive. <laughs> You've got to think this is 82, right? So that's we're in 24. So that's uh, math 42 years ago. This magazine's 42 years. It's, it's blowing my mind. Um, we then get some D&D. Druid jewels for druids of level 12 plus. D&D, another game I always wanted to play. Never really got into it. And we get a little map as well. So this is like a one-on-one -on -one mini game. The colors just absolutely popping. I love that you used to, they used to do things like this, like the little mini games that you can play. All the rules are here. And that hazardous terrain, flora and fauna. You roll to see what type. Oh no, it tells you what's in each bit. So silver birch, common yew, common ash, English oak. It's all there, it's all there. And then we're into open box, which I believe goes through each of these items. So the first one is talking about the Warlock of Firetop Mountain, fight and fantasy book. Great book. If you can find a copy, get a copy, play it, enjoy it. Otherwise, I think you can get it on Steam and it's all done electronically for you. But it talks a bit about that and how the rules work. Troll Pack, where are we? That's this one. By Chaosum. Chaosum? Is that how you're going to say that one? It still exists, that company, I do believe. I think they were well known for doing Cthulhu back in the day. Uh, it's Secrets and Adventures for RuneQuest. So it's an adaption or expansion. Not an adaption, an expansion for that game. Then we have Pirates and Plunder, an excellent new role-playing game. A company previously noted for good board games. The game can comes with an attractive illustrated box containing basic rules and advanced rules, a book covering further adventures, and a set of eight double-sided maps. 
and a pad for over 50 character sheets and two dice. The game is presented by a programmed instruction technique that lets you get to grip with it a step at a time. Very strange. Briefly, the story begins with a large pirate raid into Central America. So you take on the role of pirates. And then the last one is for Traveller. And it's a couple of ship guides by the looks of it. It's quite nice for them to do that. Then we are back into a rune quest with some additional rules that you could have. It looks like there's some climbing rules going on down here. And then Lewis, that is very hard to read. Pulse, Pulsar, Pulsir, this is part three, but it's his guide to, to being a dungeon master by the looks of things. I don't want this video to go too long and we've been yapping away for like 16 minutes. We've got some necromatic abilities by Graham Davis. Once again, more D&D. Then we got some news. You could win the Judge Dredd game. I wonder if I was to fill that in and send it off if I could win the game. Uh, then we got some figures being shown off. They're talking about a new dimension in dungeons. Talks about dungeons going 3D. Uh, Ian Livingston talking about a bit more about the Judge Dredd game. Try and make it look like a newspaper and drop some info in there for us. Some classified ads. Detailed hand-painted metal fantasy figures. Suitable for any games. Price list or a 50p sample. <laughs> Ipswich. Wow. This is... Uh, you could just spend an entire video just reading through them. Then we have adverts for game fairs. Uh, Northern Sagas. Black Diamond's Game Shop, the Forever People. It's a comic book shop. Would you and your gaming pals like White Dwarf for Christmas, the subscription deal? And then there's a White Dwarf Christmas competition. That looks fun. The Northern Adventurers. And it looks like we are pretty much into adverts here. Grimsby. Games, figures, dice, and rules. The Warlord Games Shop. Not the Warlord Games we know right now. Dragon Tower figure cases. Uh, looks like terrain options. It's just such a blast from the past, isn't it? And I just saw something cool there on that last page that we will have to discuss. Look at all these shops. I wish uh, Games Workshop would still post about, I don't know, people who actually sell their figures in games. It'd be quite nice if they actually worked with the community a bit more. Then we got these different games, Apocalypse. I owned that as a kid. It was a great game. Can't believe it was only £7. <laughs> I think I paid more than that at the car boot for it. I stupidly went into that phase of late teenage years and I sold up everything i had this one i had this one and i had the valley of four winds and i sold them and it's the biggest regret of my life Ugh. i also had ring quest but i never played this one doctor who quirks a little bit of traveler down here and then yeah rune quest this was similar to dnd just different setting and i had this manticore figure i clearly remember having it but mine the the tail had broken off, so I just thought it was a lion with wings. Didn't realise it was a manacle. It's probably one of the first miniatures I got at a car boot sale. I remember I had a Chaos Warrior. He had a double-headed axe. Then I had a Chaos Sorcerer. And then I had this guy. And I had some Judge Dread figures. But obviously didn't know what they were at the time. And then Space Frontier, I also owned... I played this one. It was great. I wanted this. I saw it at car boot. It was like a couple of quid. And I wanted it purely because I loved the idea of the flying space monkeys. But it came with maps. And comically, I still have, I think, one of the maps from this game. It's the only thing that survived of that game. Through my years of moving house. 
And it only survived because it ended up in a Marvel RPG set. But anyway, that's it. I'm sorry, this was a longer video than I thought it was going to be. I yabbered on there. But I hope you enjoyed. Like, comment, subscribe. Let me know if you want to see more of this kind of stuff. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed. We'll have more painted figures soon. But until then, cheers for watching and bye bye. Yeah.